working with him. Yeah, working. All right, perfect. Uh, welcome everybody to the LIR Mastermind, um, our first LIR Mastermind discussion. Uh, most of what we're going to talk about today is really the state of our current market. Um, I think it's a huge topic amongst um, just different sides of it in terms of, uh, you know, realtor side, the lending side, um, even the investment side. So I just kind of want to get some perspective uh, from you, from you all and in, in, in your, I would say your niche. Um, a lot of you guys are experts in, in different oh, sides of real estate. Um, and we all have our own angles in terms of uh, how we thrive through no matter what the market is. So um, I just kind of want to open up the floor, um, start off with a big general question. What are you guys seeing in the current market and how are you guys navigating in terms of keeping your business level throughout the summer? And then for all the Florida people, if you just, before you talk the first time, just introduce yourself, your name, and I guess what city you're mostly focused in. Perfect. Anybody want to jump in? Sean's in the middle, so I guess. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Sean Dow, Lifestyle uh, International Realty, New Jersey. Um, so what was the question, Mo? Um, what, what, what are you seeing uh, realistically in the current market? And then kind of how are you keeping your business consistent, um, you know, kind of with the term? Sure. So, um, you know, what, what I've been seeing the last, you know, kind of 90 days or so. Uh, but it's a mastermind. Kind of slow down a little bit in terms of buyers so you know that fast-paced market where things were flying off the shelf in you know 72 hours 48 hours uh, you know lines down the sidewalk it's very area specific now as well as house specific right um so you'll get that at say a rutherford uh you know from a very specific type of buyer that's looking for that eight hundred thousand dollar house that's fully done um you know so it's it's more house specific area specific now but buyers are a lot more leery now as well um right. You know, they're not settling for just anything and, and competing like they were, you know, last summer, even six months ago. Um, you know, they kind of want to make sure that it's, it's the right fit for them and it's the right house and kind of crunch all the numbers and, and weigh their options. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think I've been seeing some of, uh, some of the same uh, in terms of just my business, some of the buyers uh, that I've been working with. Um, I'm curious to know from some of you guys, uh, how do you think the lending is, is playing a part in the effects that you're seeing with the buyers? Um, maybe Lena, you can take it's it. It's absolutely responsible for the shift in reactions that we're getting in the market, right? Because people are going to be more hesitant to spend their money and they're going to qualify for a lot less buying power. Yep. We've seen a 60% increase in rates in such a short amount of time. And if you look at it historically, we've absorbed it wonderfully, way better than you would have thought. But be that as it may, it's still a 60% increase and people are taking a step back and going, oof, it's not 2.8 anymore. Now we're looking at 6%. I have to think twice. I want to make sure they're asking more questions. They're taking a little longer and their buying power is potentially less, right? Because when the interest goes up that much, it takes away from how much they can qualify for toward the principal. So it's 100% responsible, in my opinion, in my, you know, in my experience. Gotcha. I think on that note, um, We've seen a lot of sticker shock from the people that were shopping from a couple months, but I'm seeing a better reaction from the ones that are just starting to look now. Absolutely. So, so like right. any buyer that's coming into the market now, difficult. they were looking at five, eight, maybe they're looking at six and they don't feel it that much. Absolutely. So I think it's a little bit of that education and it's just the numbers, right? Like, so that person that was shopping at three, look, at the end of the day, you're still renting. You're paying somebody else hundred percent interest. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So, so it's like, do you need to move? Do you need to buy a house or not? Um, but that's definitely coming into play. And I wanted to talk a little bit. I heard a new program. Um, I know a lot of lenders have it, but they have different criteria um, where they do this. Like if you're a 5% conventional buyer, they can give you a cash pre-approval. Yeah. I, so I'm doing the first one for the first time I'm doing it now. Let me know how it goes. Yeah. So here, here's the interesting thing. So what it is, is like you have to qualify with certain things and they do underwriting up front. Right. And then they give you a pre-approval yeah. with uh, right, proof of funds. You. So you make the offer in cash and it is cash to the seller. If the buyer can't close in time, they're going to try to do a 5% conventional. If they can't close in time, the bank will close on it cash Correct. and then sell it to the buyer. Uh, and the only fee that's additional is the transfer tax. Because right. then the bank has to pay transfer tax when they sell. Because they have to fold the debt. Right. Yeah. Every doing that Not every lender... Not every some are doing it and i've seen some that have the same program but they have different overlays yeah. so i had one bank that offered it to me but they were like minimum 780 fico and then i was like damn my client doesn't qualify and then i had another bank offer it to me and they were doing 680 and i got them approved to it so i think that's a very valuable program especially in this market 
uh, with multiple offer situations, you can literally come in and catch. So I'll, I'll share a little bit about maybe next month. I'll talk about how that's going. Yeah, I, I'm curious. But they're the ones that like, you know, even though the, bar, the market's crazy, I'm seeing the top of the market drop down, but I'm still getting 10, 15 offers competing with people in the 350, 450 range. Like you're, you're still getting that. Sure. I, I mean, I think uh, to Sean Dell's point is really area specific is location. So the, the yeah. you know, the, the areas that were in high demand, I'm seeing some like, um in the middlesex area like you said up here a little further like rutherford some of those spot areas where you're seeing they're still, still getting 10 15 offers of the houses uh the right house maybe it's fully renovated moving ready um type homes but you know some of it very very different buyers also so if you're talking those go to rutherford maybe those are two very like you said night and day just yeah. you know night and day buyers so it's it's area specific it's house specific correct on on the listing side i guess i know oscar you do a lot of listings what yeah. are you seeing over there on the buy on the sellers where they say to be honest anywhere between 300 and 500 have an issue selling the properties yeah. Especially, uh, yeah specifically for investors because you know usually some investors they will do some makeup and those properties are sitting on the market for the longest so mm -hmm. anywhere between 600 and 900 i feel like those are the people who have enough capital Right. To not be scared about, I don't care about the interest rate, and they'll end up buying the house. Exactly. But this anywhere between is 300 and 500, I should mean that they have 50 in the bank account, and now they got to take a look at 35 k 40 k and I'm just going to be able to assist them on actually buying the house. So my 300 to 500 had six days average in the market. Right now, I'm having 48. Wow. You know, and then anywhere between 600 to 900, I'm selling it within seven days. Yeah. Now. And you've seen the price reductions happening and everything? With anywhere between 300 to 500, yes, I'm reducing like 35K, 50K price reductions. Is that and spot markets though? Or everywhere? To be honest, I, I mean, right now I have one in Belleville, beautiful, fully renovated. Nobody's putting an offer really? at 425, single family home, completely renovated. But I have another one in Broadway for 399. And I had 36 offers. Right? Yeah. So, but it all depends on the market, like you said before. Yeah. But I feel like that bracket between 600 to 900 is the easiest market to sell right now, just yeah. because they have enough capital to say, you know what, I'm going to end up buying a house. Qualified, right? Qualified. Yeah. yeah. That's the biggest yeah. thing is just having the right qualified buyers these days right. who is not afraid to take that step, right? right? Who's not going to be chill. afraid to pay the higher rate? Who's not going to be afraid nah, to pay nah. more money in order to yeah. make it happen? So to me, is I see more qualified buyers than anything. Yeah. That's why I feel like there's less offers. My cousin's daughter, because she had called my mom to so just stay with her you know, three months ago. But her mom, was a little bit my different. Right? So you had a she lot had to go to work, and, and she wasn't back. And everyone, please mute yourself. Clients aren't going to be qualified for three fifty, maybe three seventy five, four hundred max. So you're not going to see that. So they just didn't need to day check that. They're getting qualified with the new rate. She so had been getting it. offers from people who got qualified 90 days ago with yeah. a different rate. And now when like we're on the contract, they're like, oh, never mind. You know, it's a new that's, rate. That's, that's, that that's happened to three you know? agents that I've spoken to in the last two weeks that their client has no longer qualified yeah. because of the rate shift. Mm -hmm. Some lenders are submitting pre qualification like that, like, like nothing's going on. And then when I'm on the contract, they're like, oh, never mind with the new rate, they're qualified. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, one of, uh, it's one of the reasons why you should always vet your pre approvals yeah. when you yeah. receive an offer on one of your listings. Call I call every single lender yeah. for, you know, we'll go through them and I'll pick out you know, after meeting with them, the top three or whatever it may be. And I vet every single pre-approval and I'm asking you, I'm asking them questions, you know, have you verified credit income assets? Yeah. Um, you know, and the questions that I'm asking them, I, if they're speaking to me intelligently about that client, I know whether they're trying to BS me or not. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? So we know kind of what we're dealing with, but definitely in this climate, that's something that all agents should be doing. Definitely. I think, I think, I mean, to kind of both of your points, right. You kind of brought up, um, in terms of like uh, like buyers that you were working with prior, like a few months back, three months, six months, I think those are the buyers that are um, a little bit harder to work with now because they kind of saw what it was like before, right? right? So they're I comparing think, it to something that's right. no longer <clears existing. throat> correct. So yeah. I think people who are are just being pre-approved, right? They kind of don't know any different. Mm -hmm. Their standard, the right. new standard is five percent, six percent, whatever right. that looks like, five and a half, or, you know, depending on the. And honestly, we were there before the pandemic. We hit five percent before. Yeah. That, sure. that, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Um, like, I started focusing more on buyers, like most recently, quarter three, you know, to be specific. And the buyers that are coming in right now, I feel like they actually have more of a sense of urgency. The newer buyers, because they hear about the Fed meeting coming up, and they're gonna raise again. So I feel like the people that I'm working with right now are actually more eager to buy than the people that I was working with in the last couple of months. So there's always two sides to the fence, you know, regardless.
I think I think as agents, it's important that we stay very much informed with the Fed meetings. Like, for instance, there's going to be big news tomorrow, two o'clock. Chair Powell is going to come out, mm -hmm. and the market has braced itself for a 75 point, 75 basis Base. point increase. We they break, you know, the stock market, the market, the lending market. We we're anticipating that. If sure. it's a hundred. We're going to see a problem. Good. We're going to have an issue. There's going to be a bigger reaction. So whether it is that or isn't, if I was anybody out here who's going to try to sell a house today, I would brace myself because now what's my speech? What's my pitch, right? Sure. How am I educating them as to why it's still a good investment? Because regardless, we all know that real estate is a solid investment. Yeah, it's, solid over over, it's solid over anything else because sure. of so many reasons. Um, so whether the basis points rise higher than we expect or not, how can we still educate them the right way to make them go through with the process, right? Yeah, I did see that. And I don't know if it's a little bit of softening, but I saw the White House put out like clarification on what a recession is. Yeah. Did you guys see yeah. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so I feel like maybe they're trying to prime it. I don't know. It could actually go either way so, tomorrow. So, right. So tomorrow could go either way. Yeah. You could come out and say 50, right? And wow. we could all go, ooh, sigh of relief. The market goes this way and everybody's happy. It could go one of two ways. It could go one of three ways, actually, yeah. right? But being prepared to understand what that means yeah. and how to communicate to that. And person. when it's going to happen, because those conversations, you're right, strategically, you pick when you have that conversation with your client. Absolutely. Uh, but so for those that didn't see the post, essentially, Traditionally, economists have looked at two negative GDP growth quarters as the sign of a recession. Correct. But now the White House is saying, oh, there's no official definition. Well, and, <laughs> and, you know, it, it factors in unemployment. It factors in other, other aspects. And I feel like that's almost a prime for them to try to say that the economy is better than what it might actually be. Well, yeah, be. because I think that they're trying to uh, they're trying to curb you know what people believe. What they're trying to say is now is the question is, are we already in a recession, recession. right? So you know, not the, the government is trying to, you know, uh, control inflation, but not do it so fast that we, we fall into, I guess, what they're trying to say would be a recession. But if we have, you know, back to back quarters where we're, it's just not going well, then, you know, it's funny, I guess it's just uh, subjective. Like, what do you what do you classify being in a, in a, in a recession? Well, I don't think it's necessarily subjective, right? Because like, I think that that textbook definition has stood true. But what we're seeing these are not normal quarters. These are not normal fiscal quarters. We're sure. just coming off of so many different contributing factors of a not normal market right. for a lot of reasons, right? So to compare these two quarters is really unfair. So to call this a recession coming off of like us going this way, sure. we're slowing down. There's, there's, we're seeing stabilization, but I don't think that this specific uh, circumstance could be called a recession. It, it's 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 out of it's out of historical uh, parameters. You know. Yeah. And Erica, you you've been in the business what, 14, 17? 16 years. Sixteen years. So I mean, looking back at that track, do you remember any time that was like this before? So everybody's scared during these times, but to me, I've seen a very different market from what everybody's seen. Right. We were in a market where everything was a foreclosure and a short sale. But one thing I can guarantee you: recession or recession. 9% interest rate, 10% interest rate, some had two interest rates. People were still buying houses because it's a necessity. Right. It's a matter of us informing, educating, as you said, our clients and advising them and helping them buy something that's going to be beneficial to them and their family. Right. The market changes. I call it, I say it's like surfing. You ride the waves. Mm -hmm. Some waves are higher than others, but it's up to us to educate and help people get to where they need to get because this, I'm not really afraid. Everybody's like, Oh my God, what are we going to do? What we have to do is go back to basics. Mm -hmm. We have to be in people's faces. We have to work a little harder. We have to wake up an hour earlier. If the market is not going to be the simple, you know, smooth market that we've had for the past couple of years, you know, it was simple, easy. The rates, everybody is saying, Oh my God, the rates are high. We need to change that and start saying, no, they're stabilizing. Mm -hmm. they're, for me in my market, once I seen five and six, I was so happy for my clients because they were actually five and six, not nine, 10, 11, 12. Right. So this is just something I say, real estate goes up and it goes down. It's a circle. It comes full force. It goes from new construction, you know, to regular sales, to foreclosures, to short sales. It's just a market trend that continues to go. So I think that what we need to do is just, like you said, stay educated teach our clients and just know that we have to work a little harder to help them get to where they got have to get to, but it kind of helps stabilize everything because things were going crazy mm -hmm. out of control. Yeah. Do you think, so I guess to kind of, uh, you know, the last two comments that you, you both made, right? So you talked about stabilization and us going in that way. And I agree with you guys. I think that, that that's where we're going. Would you say that 
that the home values need to get to a certain point before we reach that that level of stabilization. So like you you spoke about, okay, now the rates are kind of going up and it's going to stabilize, right? We were at, we were running at a rate that there was no way we we're going to last running at that rate. So is the answer the rates rising, the home values coming down so that we get to a, a normal market? Is that what you guys I, I foresee that going down some because people that were qualifying, it just happened to me today, I'm showing houses up to 530, call the agent, the lender, lender says, oh, 480. This was last week. I call them today, I show them a house, 480, excited, let's go. Oh no, 430, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's good, the prices, people, sellers are gonna have to start realizing the prices are going to have to start coming down a little bit so they can actually sell. If not, they're going to sit 45, three months. And, and I remember extending my listings. I haven't extended a listing agreement in I don't know how long. And I'm listing properties for 30 days. I'll say in 30 days, yeah. I'll, I'll have your house on the contract in a week. I was in a market where I would get six months, extend the listing, another six months, and hope to sell it within that time without short selling it, right? So I think that the prices are going to start to come down. Some of the sellers are going to say, I have a necessity to sell. Right. But I don't have qualified buyers. And going back to what he was saying, it depends on your neighborhood, the town, where you are, whether it's East Rutherford or Belleville, Union County, Rawway, Roselle, for example. Sure. So it's all that is going to start stabilizing and the market's going to start going down the prices back to normalize so that people can actually qualify to buy in these certain areas. Let me let me interject on something. I don't got my face in here because most yeah, look good at me. <laughs> but, uh, but let me tell you as a brokerage, I, I, as long as things stay like this, this is probably one of, we've grown every single month in this whole four, five, six percent, you know, and we're going to continue because we're outpacing the dip, right? So if it's dip 10%, then we've had to add on 10 or more percent to outpace it. We're actually adding on 20% of it. These masterminds, I mean, and the, the only, the only person that might be hurt, no, that's going to be hurt from this is a new agent that's not in the right brokerage that's not going to teach them the things they got to do to stay current this table I won't have an issue of, right I let them expireds happen you're going to get a lot more listings because right. you're going to now have you haven't called expireds yeah. in a long time because there is an expired for the <laughs> most part right I'm targeting that. so now those yeah, are, i look <laughs> at a crystal model his eyes must be like hearts because he's like oh my god investment opportunities are going to yes. be coming back right okay short sales opportunity uh like everybody here has a certain yeah. niche that they're going to be able to like they might have dropped on the traditional regular listing door knock and whatever case it might have dipped 25 percent, but they were able to supplement 40 percent from some other place and these that's why these masterminds are great now a bearings on some unforeseen 30 percent, 20 percent. nobody here should walk away less than they did last year because now you have different things you have created like for example we we're just speaking if 2008 happened again, I probably and, and I had the knowledge I had today, lifestyle probably wouldn't be open because I would have $20 million in three years because I know what's going to happen. So we're all wise enough on this table to know how we're going to stay ahead of the curve. So all we got to do is keep sharpening the blade. And what happens, the sad part and the good part is that other people are not going to be able to stay in the race too long. So the, the person who's a realtor, oh, my cousin has a real estate license. They'll probably let their license lapse. They're not going to be putting on social media anymore because they have to do something else. But we're going to be able to gobble up the market share that they let go. Because when the, the times are good, everybody's a realtor. Everybody's getting listens that you might have yeah. got it. And you don't because you're doing so well. Now it's time for you to get your land grab and grab as much as you can. You got to post more. Kiss you gotta babies post. and shake hands. There you go. You got to do the stuff. That, you got to do the stuff and you won't feel it. Sadly, not all agents. And, I, and I'm not putting lights on there. We're going to make sure this, this is why George, I commend you on these masterminds. Nobody's going to be left out in the, in, in, in the dark. You just work a little bit harder and you're going to make a lot more money because you're going to eat other people's lunches that are just going to say, you know what, I'm not going to eat from this, this restaurant anymore, which is real estate. Now you grab that for yourself. And then when it all turns, and if it doesn't dip, because all of us in this table are still crushing it, lifestyle, we're still opening offices because other brokerages are going to be like, oh, no, we can't. If you have a 20, 30 agent brokerage, then you might have all your agents thinking it's negative. And you're like, Don't, and if they think it's negative, they're not recruiting more. They're like, oh, my God, you know what, it throws up shop. And that's why the opportunity is uh, have been coming to us a lot more frequent because other brokers are like, no, you know what, it's, it's tough on 
Like, and it was the mindset. Okay. And, and, and I, I love that. Keep mindset, it mindset is everything. Like, well, I'm like, like to just I, keep, huh? keep, keep the mind. Like, right. just keep yeah, doing things that you got to know. Some of the doctor told me that she doesn't have to. I just feel like you got to target people who are. And I'm like, but they're going to be a problem. Like, for example, I have issues where sellers wanted to sell before and they wanted to buy another house, but now they don't want to sell because they're going to buy high with a high interest rate. So now you should target people who are like, they need to sell. Like you said, expires. Like, said that's that a perfect because example. Of this they probably have a vacant house they need to sell by tomorrow, right? So not every seller is going to, the, the listings are definitely going to shrink because the sellers are going to like, okay, Everyone I'm going to sell my house. My... I'm fully paid up to buy another house with a higher rate. So now you got to be going to those houses that they need to sell, like investors. Not probably. Delivery, well, actually, let me you know? put that in, which is one of the lenders thing we talked about. So let's just say the rate is an issue, right? And another thing I was talking about is seller buyer credit. Use the buyer credit to buy down the point. So yeah, oh, you can't be at five percent. Okay, don't worry. We're gonna get a ten thousand dollar concession from the seller, and we're gonna buy down the point. Like you just gotta be a little bit more creative. Yeah. We, yeah. we just gotta be a little yeah. smarter than the game, and that's it. Most people don't think about that. And like, oh, I lost the buyer because of rate or the lender. You don't have a great ratio of lender. Mm -hmm. They're not teaching you. That's so the important. lender's a person that just got their license, never even thought about buying down the rate. We just gotta be one step ahead of. of and the, the curve. beautiful thing is that. You know, to, to do a sales concession, the house still has to appraise, including the concession. Sure. Beautiful thing is we're using comps from two, I three, six months back. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Over appraising. Yeah. so, you know, the seller's number one concern when you come to them with sales concession, oh, what if it doesn't appraise? Well, hit them with a couple of things. One, if it doesn't appraise, we got the cash to cover the yeah, closing correct. costs. We just want to just get it just in case. If sure. it doesn't, we'll take it off and we won't have a problem. But two, I'm pretty confident because, look, the houses were selling for a lot more than they're selling now. Yeah. So I, I, have, I have no issues. But you hit them with both of them because some people ask for the sales concession and there's no conversation about the financial security of the client right. it's not like you you're doing it because you need it it's preferable i'd rather borrow ten thousand yeah. dollars at 360 months it's yeah, cost me 48 dollars a month it's a better it's, it's a better situation yeah. all the way around i mean i don't i don't know if you guys are seeing it a ton but i've already in like i'd say the last month i've already seen it two or three times i just negotiated one with another buyer uh with a house appraised for 20 grand more i said look Let's 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 roll the the concession wasn't even on the table. Let's roll the concession, and you don't need to give give up your liquid cash. Put it over thirty years, and and then now that money you're gonna put up for your closing costs or whatever, you put back in your pocket. You know what I mean? So fifty dollars a month. Correct. So like, you want to give up ten thousand cash, or yeah. you rather yeah. pay like fifty? Yeah, absolutely. I think is I think all of us have the ability to think outside the box. I think that no matter what market that we're faced in, we need to be able to flex and do whatever we yeah. need to do to thrive. So. And I and it's it's a beautiful thing to look at all of you because I know that all of you guys have separate think, strategies to do yeah. that, right? And um, you know, one like one thing that I was curious about that's been kind of going through my mind, I wanted to ask like you guys who are working with like investors or that invest yourselves, um, you know, what do you think the strategy is or what are you seeing with like with investing, right? Because now it's it, it could be a little bit delicate uh, with with the numbers shifting, right? And then kind of shifting down. So then you know, you don't want your investors buying too high. And then, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you help them navigate through, you know, what's a good, good investment knowing that the home values are kind of coming down and you're not really sure, you know, based on that time that it's going to take to fix the property and then be able to get it on the market. Like, how are you guys, you know, navigating your investors through that? Well, I'm not letting them buy anything on the MLS thing one. So tell me what you want, where you want it, square footage, and we're going to door knock and we're going to drive for dollars and see what house looks like it needs love and looks like it's been neglected. That's an indication that that owner has lost the ability to upkeep the home physically or financially. Either way, you're going to be able to have a better chance of getting that property under market value, right? Because right now, MLS prices are not investor prices. And not at all. you different is, is missing point. So, and on that point, um, a lot of municipalities have vacant registration lists. If mm -hmm. a property is vacant, they have to register with the city or they get hit with fines. Get an Oprah, for, get an Oprah for that list and start mm -hmm. going there. So Absolutely. that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Any other strategies? What are you saying, brother? I mean, when it comes to like buying investment properties, I'm not doing it with the typical percentage that people are doing, you know, 30%, 25%. I feel like they need a little bit more cushion because, right. you know, they have carry costs, soft costs and everything. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, you know, I'm doing 40% or I'm not even using the comparables from right now. Right. I'm just like pushing it as much as they can, reducing the asking price of $50,000. What could it be in right now? Right. So, I mean, I, most of my investors are still buying. Now, to be honest, and I have investors calling me every single day that they still want to buy. They're right. looking. You know, so... It's just a matter of like percentages, you know, you don't want to use the same formulas that you were using six months ago. But I mean, the people are in my investors are literally calling me every single day. You have more deals, you have more deals. I have wholesalers pitching me deals every single day. So I feel like the like when it comes to the investment world, 
they're always going to be over there, but it's just the percentages are going to change, you know? Right. I mean, and, I agree with you. To be honest with you, I think, I think on any front, like, yeah. um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm sure a lot of you guys have been in sales a very long time. I've been in sales a very long time. And anytime I've ever managed a team, I would always tell them, like, I don't want to hear any excuse that you're about to give me because just look to your left and you look to your right and there's people doing deals. Yeah. So, you know, I think realistically, it, it really doesn't matter what market we're in. Deals are getting done every single day. Mm -hmm. The question is whether you're going to be doing gonna the deals, done. right? Yeah. To, to that point, I think what I'm telling investors is be a little more strategic. Not everything's going to appreciate the way it has been the last right. two and a half years, mm -hmm. right. but some things are still going to appreciate. Because I look at Rawway where we're opening the new office, every single one of those apartments are rented stupid high and there's a waiting list of renters. Yeah. So guess what? Yes, properties might dip, but some markets are still going to hold because right. if you have 1,500 people renting at $3,000 a month, I don't care what the market's going to do. Nobody's going to pay less than $3,000 a month mm -hmm. for a house because the alternative is renting. Everybody needs housing. So you mm -hmm. got to look at the alternatives, right? So I look at those areas as areas that are still going to appreciate. So I say, okay, let's not invest in, for example, Roselle blew up a lot because it was low right. and there was nothing else in other separate markets. But Roselle on its own didn't hold much value. And when the foreclosures happened, Roselle- It's one of the first. It's one of the first. It first goes down. Urban the same thing. Like, look, they, these were great investment opportunities when all the other markets capped out. But now that all those things are starting to open up, those are the first ones that are going to go back. So I'm going to say, let's not buy over there. Let's buy over here because these have historically held their value. Look at look at the prices back in 2008 and see what still held their value. Westfield, New Jersey never lost as much, you know, they because those people didn't have foreclosures, right? So you got to pick and choose where you're going to invest in, one. And two, I would say the investment properties, and I mean, this still has to carry through, rentals. Man, rentals are going nowhere. Yeah. New York City just hit an average of $5,000 a month in rent for the first time in history. That, what's that going to tell you? If you're in a train line within an hour from New York yeah. City, you're not going to lose if you're getting rentals over there. Right. So that's that's pretty much the strategy that I think we have to go. One of the options I give my clients in those sections that the prices go down, I tell them because my listings are not selling, just rent it out. And people are bidding on those listings. You know, I just lost a listing on, in East Orange. I had it on the contract for four fifty, dollars literally six months ago. I relisted it. If it fell through, no offers, not even one. So now I'm just like, just rent it out for 3000 So now it's like, you're just going to hold the property for another year, rent it out for 3000 And people are bidding in the rental, you know, paying 3500 3600 So for those list, for those people who are losing listings in those sections, they're letting it expire. Instead of losing the listing, you suggest them, you know, if we can, if you don't want to drop the price because you don't have enough cushion, just rent it out. You know? Absolutely. But still make your rental still, commission as yeah, a realtor. Make the rental commission and turn those into yeah. buyers when they're ready. And now you I build mean, that relationship. And remember, those people at some point, they're going to sell. So if you had 20 rental listings right now, two years from now, you're going to have 20 guaranteed listings. 100%. You know, instead of you losting the listing, be like, yo, I cannot sell this house. You figure it out on your own. You give that option. You know, we rent it out for you, hold it for a year. And now two years from now, you're going to have all the same people who rent it out with you selling in a year from now. So and those, those are guaranteed. Them. Yeah. So now they're going to recommend you to all this, all this clientele. And now you're going to keep adding up, adding up. And then two years from now, you're going to be with a huge pipeline of listings. You know? But what so. you just said proves that you understand that specific market and you're forecasting. So you're yeah. providing value when you come from a place of contribution to a seller or a buyer, but especially a seller who's struggling to sell their asset, you come from a place of contribution and they appreciate you that much more. Yeah. Right. So that goes in hands in hand with going back to the basics making sure you're going the extra mile for each and every client because now you have you're building that referral Correct. all of my business this year is referral i have not one lead that i paid for i have not one family or friend that bought a house it's referral it's relationships and reputation that i created over the last six years in a very specific market and that goes a long way right yeah. but if you're a new agent who came into an easy market where you didn't have to do the right thing it didn't matter mm -hmm. you right. just wrote a couple things down mm -hmm. on a paper and, and submitted care. it and you don't the care appraisals. we're yeah. waving everything uh -huh. i don't even know what a house inspection looks like right <laughs> uh -huh. yeah that must be nice right i well, never that crack in that foundation no, no big don't worry it's only, it's only, it's only, it's only this way. <laughs> exactly so yeah. that that's gonna get them yeah. a one deal and a one deal only because once that's over and the market does shift and you do have to now 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 the the, the spiders come climbing up out of the mm -hmm. corners mm -hmm. and who who was wrong right. who didn't do the due diligence right. well, so market, i personally oh my man. the market is shifting right so i mean that's that's going to be the difference and that's george touched on that right so everyone sitting here i've been i've been licensed for 16 years i've been doing real estate full-time for 10 right i'm a seasoned agent i think everyone sitting up here is a seasoned agent what you mentioned you know three years ago where you were taking a listing 
a standard six month listing, you may have to extend it an additional 30, 60, 90 days. That's a normal market. Right. The yeah, market right. that we normal. just came yeah. Yeah. Don't get is it. not a normal market. Correct. So anyone who was licensed in the last two years and they think that's a normal market, I have news for you. You're going to be extremely hard pressed for money in business in the next six months, and you're not going to know what to do unless your We're, brokerage does this for you. Correct, correct. And, correct. You. and you, <laughs> yeah. you, unless you're surrounded by seasoned agents who can kind of guide you through that but this is something that we're all used to this is a normal market so all we're doing is just going Reverting. back to basics and advising our clients like we like we were doing three that's years what, ago that's what i was trying to say like i actually am looking forward to this because Correct. not only do you have that's what you see topics who's a good agent. to discuss yep. with your clients now you have actual things to discuss with your clients you could provide value instead of like i'm not gonna lie yeah i, I did pretty well during this like mayhem, but you know how many times I put offers in and didn't win right. and I'm battling yeah. with people that don't even know what they're doing, but right. they're right. getting lucky. Yeah. Yeah. So it's actually something to look forward to. Yep. I have reasons to speak to my clients. We can talk about valuable things instead of just fighting with everybody to yeah. win deals. So it's, yeah. So I, the cream I, always rises I really to the top, heard right? that a lot. It's uh, the back to basics, right? I guess yeah. it's just to try to wrap up because we should try to keep them like this. Yeah. If everybody could go down and just say kind of like one of these and I'll start just to kind of give an example, but almost like a motto or like the thing that's ringing the most. Like right now, I heard a lot of people saying like, oh, should I buy? Should I not? And this concept of like marrying the house, but dating the rate, right? Like thinking about how we're going to come out of this at some point. The U.S. economy has been through worse and we've come back, right? So like that's something, that's a conversation that you're having. So I just, I wonder if everybody could just give kind of like a little tidbit of like what you're talking to your clients about that other agents can use in their conversations day to day. And everybody just uh, not all at once, but <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that, that's pretty much the one that I'm saying. I'm talking about the rate as like, look, this is what we're going through right now because it's kind of like an elastic. And I don't, I don't necessarily agree with the way the the government is handling. But look, the Fed wants a zero percent interest on you know, on money was free, literally free. That's a drastic step to take. So now we're almost at the other extreme. But at some point, the goal of this is to stabilize and come down. Yeah. So, I, you know, things are going to get a little worse before they're going to get better. But I believe they're going to get better because they have to. Like sure. at the end of the day, it's so I think the concept is real estate overall long term is a great investment. Sure. Let's still let's stick with it because it's not going to get any better anytime soon, but it will get better. That's that's pretty much right. Yeah, I, I could start on that. Like realistically, at the end of the day, we're salespeople, right? So you got to pretty much look for something to tell either a seller or a buyer to benefit. For example, if you're on the buy side, look right now, the rates are mid fives to sixes, but tomorrow we have a, a Fed meeting that it's supposed to go up 0.75 to a point. So let's get out there this week. Let's get out there this weekend or vice versa. You're on the sell side. Look, they're talking about the Fed meeting. They're going to raise the rates a point. So you might want to get that house on the market sooner before the rate goes up and then it's going to be an inevitable that rates go up, prices go down. So there's always going to be a talking topic. You just got to make sure that you leverage it the right way. I've noticed that um, consultations are a thing of the past for a lot of agents, or maybe these new agents just never um, had faced the need to go through a yep. proper one. Right. So uh, the opportunity, like you guys are saying, to have these conversations is, is, is among us. And I think we should all jump on that. So, you know, having the conversations about why real estate is valuable, understanding how to explain equity, understanding how to explain why inflation is no good for cash and why putting it into an asset is to their benefit, right? On the buy side, these are all things that you can have conversations with them in the very first consultation. So they're like, okay, not only does she understand real estate, obviously she's licensed, right? But she's coming from a place of contribution where she educated herself on a couple other economic factors that can help me understand why this is a good choice and why I can feel safe. So, I mean, I know that we're beating a dead horse here about going back to basics, but have a really good consultation on the buy and the sell side. And that, and one that, that it, you know, has both resources from lending and understanding equity and understanding the market and being able to speak to them from a place of walking the walk, not just talking the talk. I think that'll go a long way. 100%. Yeah, definitely. I would say like for me, um, with a lot of the buyers that I'm working with is more of, um, and it's always been an education piece. You kind of touched on it a bit, um, and and I think it's it's more or less kind of giving them. They you know a lot of a lot of buyers were the last couple of years we were dealing with like the competition being so crazy and stuff like that. And yeah, the rates are going up and et cetera. But I think a lot of the buyers that are coming to the table are people who need to buy, right? So that they're qualified and like they need to buy. 
So, you know, the perspective is more, it's always better to buy sooner than later. We don't know what's coming. Um, and also there's less competition in the market. I've been seeing, um, to your point, more, unfortunately, um, you know, more listings, um, staying on a little bit longer, um, you know, people giving stuff at asking. All this stuff was like, it doesn't happen. Like asking, don't tell me that. Don't even speak that thought, you know, wasn't something that was even possible. Um, now you know, I'm calling for, the agents. I'm like, yeah, you're going to submit an offer. <laughs> 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 I got a request for feedback from the agents for the first time in two years. Yeah. 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 I was your showing. Yeah. 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 I'm big on setting expectations up front. I think if you do that right, mm -hmm. the right way up front, you know, uh, for the most part, it's smooth sailing. I think yeah. people, um, you know, you kind of lose them or you deal with more issues when you when you don't set the right expectations up front. They get blindsided by something. If their mind is in the right place from the beginning, it's just really about finding a house that kind of works for them. And, and I think the market is a little soft. Um, you know, for sellers and, and I think buyers are, are starting to have a little bit of the advantage there. And for me, speaking to, you know, to your point, yeah, you kind of talked about it kind of getting back uh, normal and you enjoying it. Me too. Because I remember a market where it was more of like, okay, now we can negotiate. Let's talk. Mm -hmm. Who, who's the better, who's the better agent? Not sure. that it's a, you know, of, uh, you know, cause I see it all too often, you know, agents like bickering or like fighting. And I don't think that's smart either. It's you know, we need each other to get through deals, but I think it, it, it this market is moving more towards skill versus yeah. it, it you know it kind of got to you know i had a i had got to a lottery <laughs> correct i got to a point yeah. where my where sure. my buyers where i'm like hey look like the competition's not the seller it's these other buyers yeah. you yeah. know what i mean we're going to war with the other buyers it, it's not really you know who who can negotiate the best deal for their client you know buyer to seller it's, right, it was stop taking all the good ones bro so, those other people yeah, yeah. Yeah. you got to do like three so years, just went through all I mean, yeah, no, let somebody give my opinion on, on the listings because you know I do primarily listings. So I feel like for those agents, you shouldn't go back to that. I mean, you're always gonna look at the comparables or whatever. So in the last six months or whatever is on the contract. But one of the things that I'm doing, which I mean I did it most of my listings, but now I'm doing it more often, you gotta look at your competition. Mm -hmm. I always tell my client, see what's active right now. And if the house next door is going for 499, you're listing yours at 450, even though yours is better. Because, you know, now instead of just going based on the comparables, because we did based on the comparables for appraisal purposes, for when it, whoever's going to lend the, the money for the property. But now you got to do it. Who's going to come into the house? So for those who get in listings, it's not just, okay, let me go back six months and compare the property. So I tell my client, look, this is your competition. Everybody's sitting on the market 30, 40, 50 days. So now, even though those houses are worse than yours, you know, you want to be that competition. So you're within that bracket. So, I mean, when it comes to my clients, I always tell my, my partners and my team that, Agents should never talk about marketing too much because it's so simple to say, hey, look, I'm going to take professional pictures. I'm going to do open houses and he's going to sell this weekend, right? Sure. Now it's a little bit more uh, Fed topics, you know, inflation and everything. And I figure talking about numbers most of the time, instead of just marketing, you're going to get the listing 99% of the times, you know, because my competition a lot of times is, oh, this realtor is going to, oh, he's going to do a broker's open. I'm still doing it. Well, I don't, I don't need to emphasize that, you know, mm -hmm. but when you start educating yourself, like that, that kind of time. And most of my clients are investors. Technically, I never been into a recession or anything like that. But <laughs> I'm literally teaching myself how to get to that level where like I know what I'm talking about. Market. And you know, just hey, look, I'm gonna take your listing and put it up on the yeah. market. You know? Yeah, market. So yeah. I think that that's a huge point. And I, I do that in my presentation that when you're pricing a, a property, it doesn't even matter about the company. The, uh, the comps, right? Exactly. If the comps say 500 and you have five houses that are priced at 300, guess what, boss? Yeah. <laughs> you put it at 500, that's they're that's not going to come see your house. So that's yeah. a very important part in the yeah. presentation that you always have to do. You always want to be number one or two in that slot because you want as many people in the door right away. So that's a very Sometimes what I do, if I don't see competition, I wait for a little bit just to see if something will come up and I'll list it right there. So that way, when people say, you know, I'd rather go to this house than the other house. Because mm -hmm. so, if you're the only property sitting in the market, it's like sometimes you're not going to get enough people, you know. Correct. So that's, that's, that's pretty much what I do. You guys are missing, right? So back to what you were saying again, I think it's depending if you're working with a seller or if you're working with a buyer, how I'm going to approach this market and what's happening. But the sellers, I think, again, is 
educating them, explaining to them, and actually doing a real listing presentation yeah. and explaining the process of selling a home, not saying here, sign here, sign here, sign here in three days, I'll have you 60,000 over asking with $20,000, uh, you know, out of pocket. So now you get to kind of go through that. And I think that when you're going through that and you're going through a real listing presentation or even a buyer's consultation, I love doing buyer's consultation. I know that if I have a client sit in front of me, I know if they're a ready, willing, mm -hmm. and able buyer. That's key point right now. Everybody wants to buy and everybody wants to sell, but not everybody's ready, willing, and able. Or is it a necessity? Do you need to sell? Are you just putting the house on the market to see if you can sell it and see what happens? Because now we're, we're putting the house on the market, overpricing it. And expecting all this, so I think it's like I try to educate them. When's the right time to buy the house? Now. When's the right time to sell? Now. Are you ready, willing, and able? Then this is the moment. You're worrying about interest rates? We can write them off. If they drop to 2%, like, you know, 3% again, you do a refinance. If it doesn't, but you're in your home, right? So I think it's educating them, doing a seller's consultation and a buyer's consultation and explaining the process. When is the right time? Now. If you're ready, willing, and able, this is it. And you having the knowledge and the sources, the attorneys, the lenders, the, the whole team of, of people that you need to get the process to the closing table. Because I think our duty is we're closers. We're, you know, we should be closing experts. Our job is to close the transaction. But you know in the beginning if you can close it. From when you put an offer to you, you know, put a listing, you know, will I close this transaction? Will this house close? So I think it's educating, doing a listing consultation and going through a buyer's consultation to see if you have a real solid seller and if you have a solid buyer. I know I keep jumping in, but just to, <laughs> to, to speak to the people that are watching, you guys are worried about what's going on in the market, right? Business, is, you don't have any right now. So why not put more effort in, like she's saying, sit down with a client for 30 minutes, have coffee with them, explain to them everything that's going on. Now you have an opportunity where you have less busyness and you could dedicate more time to your clients. Like when COVID came, I was kind of upset because People didn't want to meet face to face. Anymore. Right. And it kind of took away your leverage point. Yeah, absolutely. And then the mayhem came. So it's like you don't actually get to prove to the clients your actual value. Now you have all this time yeah. in the world, figure it out, put together presentations, and dedicate the time. Back to basics. Excel right away. Back, back to, to basics. basics. That's what we're going to call this episode of the Masterminds going to be yeah. called Back to Basics. Back, back to basics. basics. Sean and Chris, I think you I guys think, are um, you know, back to basics, right? So it's, <laughs> it's going to, it's, it's going to translate into more business and people are going to love you. So when you yeah. do those consultations, I mean, you know, you're kind of holding their hand. It's, um, you know, it can be nerve wracking for a first time home buyer. Um, they have a million questions. You guide them through that process. You do it, you know, intelligently in a smooth manner. Um, they're going to love you. Right. And that's where the referrals come in and, and you growing, you know, your sphere. Um, you know, so that's definitely one thing you want to do. And, um, uh, on the listing side, I mean, it's it's just, you know, um, like you guys said, you know, just looking at the comps, reading those, uh, you know, putting yourself in the best position, uh, you know, to get those people in the door because you're dealing with smaller buying pools now. Um, you know, yeah. so those are those are the best things that you can kind of do on, on both sides. 100%. I mean, look, you guys said a lot of it already, right? There's a lot of things that you guys mentioned uh, that we all practice on a daily basis. And I think you guys literally hit every key note possible. And the biggest thing, like we all said again, right back to the basics, being more personal with your, your clients, being more, in, you know, engaging with the clients, be more face-to-face, -face. you know, now that we're kind of getting out of that COVID era, right, where people are a little bit more leaning to, to meet in person a little bit better. I feel like getting in front of your clients more than what we used to is going to bring a lot of that back together right? right being able to show them like you were saying doing more presentations in person you know invite them to the office show them where you work out of show them your space show them what you can do show them who's here to help you as a family right you're not going to be the only person selling that property right because you're going to have a team behind you that's going to assist so to me i mean i think that's that's really important that it's aspect. a person business at the end of the day mm -hmm. yep. bringing it so back to that show profession up, show up sure. as you and and your tribe will find you everybody right. has their pool of clients that resonate with them mm -hmm. i sell million dollar condos and sweatpants because i show up as me and people mm -hmm. appreciate that right i'm not wearing a business suit ever erin you don't wear suits either we don't wear suits we show up as us and we come with hard real evidence of why we can get the job done good information about the market and people follow you know be yourself be authentic don't come in as, as a salesperson wearing a suit that doesn't feel like you be you i think just to wrap up i think shifting over to what we as a brokerage can do 
is for all the agents that are starting out or people who haven't been in those turbulent markets now, based on everything you're hearing, shoot us messages, ask us questions. What topics do you guys want to know about? How many of you haven't done a buyer's presentation? Maybe we can get, you know, we all take a turn to do different things that we do. I have a packet that I give and a, and a PowerPoint that I do. Maybe I'll do that in a training. Maybe you can show us your listing presentation. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that short sale process. They're not here yet, but let's start getting you guys ready for when it is. We're good, right? That's the point of these masterminds is you guys are hearing from us. Now, extrapolate, hold, that person said this. I don't know anything about that. Right. Ask us and we'll do those trainings for you guys. So, Mo, you want to close yeah, it out? Try to keep everybody ahead, right? Exactly. Be, for what's be proactive, not reactive, yeah, for sure. Yeah, can I say one thing, too? Like, No, you keep jumping in, bro. <laughs> I'm I mean, I always tell everybody, you know, if you want to put the effort in, we're here to help. That, yeah. That's guaranteed. Listed presentations, buyers, consultation. Yeah. Now is the time to put the effort in. Put the tools in your tool belt now. You know, it'll go tenfold. Yeah. That's right. Guaranteed. Sh sharpen those skills. If you wait till it happens, it's too late. Get organized. Fine tune. We got the time, so. I guess on that note, uh, we'll wrap it up. I uh, just so want to thank all of you guys for coming um, and, and you know for lending your words and your knowledge uh, to, to everyone. Um, just so everyone knows, we're going to be doing this once a month. Uh, this is our first, uh, but we look forward to continuing to do them, continuing to, uh, to teach and to give up as much as we possibly can to everyone. Um, and with that being said, until next time. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.